There's something so magical and meaningful about a rainbow. There's such a stunning symbol of hope and beauty after a storm. There's such a beautiful reminder that even when times are challenging, even when we wrestle with our current situation, beauty can always be found. And since I love rainbows so much, I was super excited to discover something really similar, a fog bow or white rainbow. This is a phenomenon where a rainbow occurs in fog and its colors are more muted, they're softer, and often misty. To capture the wonder of a misty fog bow and to remind us that beauty is all around us, Amy Mercier has designed a pattern for you with beautiful little fan shapes that resemble the rare fog bow. To wear this cowl is to be swaddled in the most delicious comfort. You'll feel warm and snuggly and beautiful wrapped in this gorgeous cowl. And just look at the wonder of this design. I love that it's a tube in both directions. So around this way and then also around this way so it's extra cozy. So we used our soft sugar fluff fingering yarn for some of the knit rounds as well as the horizontal openwork sections. It resembles the soft ethereal edges of the rare fog bow. And for the soft speckled sections, our Oasis fingering yarn resembles the little fog bows with their soft muted colors. And and as beautiful as this cowl is, it's made up of mostly knit rounds, just basically three other rounds that you need to know how to knit. So I would love to show you the simplicity of this design today. You can download the pattern and get the yarn at expressionfiberarts.com. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for email updates for a weekly free knit and crochet pattern. And I would love to give away a set of the yarn used to make this pink version. To enter, just make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel and comment below letting me know if you have ever heard of a fog bow. So let's make this cozy, soft cowl. To begin, we're gonna start with a provisional cast on. And this is just a cast on where you leave your beginning stitches lie so that you can graft them onto your ending stitches later. Begin the provisional cast on. I'm going to use some scrap yarn and I'm going to do the crochet hook method. So go ahead and create a little slip knot and pop that right onto your crochet hook. Then grab your needle and you're going to have your yarn on the bottom and then your needle and then your hook on top. And all you're going to do is go ahead and grab that yarn and pull it through. So there's your first stitch. Wrap it under, grab your yarn, pull it through. Wrap your yarn under, grab it, pull it through, and you're gonna continue working as many stitches as mentioned in the pattern. So Amy does recommend in the pattern, if you are starting out with a slip knot like I did, to not count that as your first stitch. So however many stitches you need to cast on, go ahead and add an extra, and just don't work that first slip knot. So once you've done that, you're gonna go ahead and chain a few, and then you can just pull that in through and just let it hang. Now we're just gonna knit a few rounds. So since this was scrap yarn, we're good to go ahead and grab our actual yarn to start knitting. Since I'm doing a smaller swatch today, I am gonna be using the magic loop method, but you shouldn't need to. For the full size cowl, your stitches should go nicely all the way around your circular needle. And be sure to check the pattern PDF for the specific number of rounds that you need to knit. So here's what you've got when you've knit a few rounds. Here's our beautiful little provisional cast on that we can take out later. And then we're good to go ahead and move into the wave section. So the wave section starts with more knit rounds, so you'll wanna work those. And then here's how you work the waves. So I'm gonna show you how to work round 21. We're gonna start by purling two together three times. So go ahead and bring your yarn to the front. Purl those next two stitches together and do that twice more. Grab those next two stitches and purl them together. And again, grab the next two and purl those together. Next, we're gonna knit one yarn over six times. So knit one, yarn over, that's once. Knit, yarn over, that's twice. Knit, yarn over three times. Knit, yarn over four. Knit, yarn over five. And knit, yarn over, that's six. Next, we're gonna purl two together three times. Purl two together. Purl two together. And purl two together. And you're just gonna repeat that all the way around. And then again, you'll have more knit rounds. And when you repeat the rounds in that section, you end up with this beautiful wavy texture, like layers upon layers of amazing fog bows. 
Now we're gonna work the horizontal open work section. This is a nice easy section which gives just a little bit of delicate laciness to your pattern. You're gonna work some more knit rounds of course and then here's how you work round 87. For round 87 we're gonna start with a yarn over and then for the first stitch you're gonna actually slip the first one knit wise. So like so. Then go ahead and knit one stitch. Then you're gonna take that slipped stitch and just pass it over and off. And that's it, you're gonna repeat that around. Yarn over, slip one knitwise, knit the next stitch, and then pass that slipped stitch over. So yarn over, slip one knitwise, knit one, and then pass that slip stitch over and just continue repeating that all the way around. Yarn over, slip, knit, pass. Then you knit more rounds, and here's how you work round 94. For round 94, you're gonna start by slipping one knitwise. Then you're gonna knit one. Go ahead and pass that slip stitch over, and then yarn over. So just repeat that around. Slip one knitwise, knit one, pass that slip stitch over, yarn over. So slip, knit, pass that slip stitch over, yarn over, slip, knit that next stitch, pass the slip stitch over, yarn over, and just continue repeating that around. After you do that, you're gonna continue to work more knit rounds. Those are the rounds that you repeat to make this cowl. It really is as simple as that. When you've completed all your rounds and you're ready to join the end to the beginning so it looks seamless, you'll need to know how to work Kitchener stitch. So here's how you do that. So you have live stitches here at the end of your project. Obviously yours is gonna be much longer and we need to graft those to these beginning stitches. So we've gotta get these stitches back onto a needle. So we're gonna remove our scrap yarn. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this and we're gonna grab our scrap and just start unraveling. And as you do so, let me get that out of the way, you're gonna see that these stitches here become visible and you're gonna go ahead and pop those onto your needle. And you're just gonna work your way all the way down. So pull out more of your scrap yarn Here's another stitch, pop that onto your needle. And you wanna mount your stitches correctly so that they're positioned like so. So go ahead and grab your next stitch. Boop, pop that onto your needle and continue working all the way around so that you get all of your beginning stitches back onto your needle. So my piece is too short to graft the ends to the beginning stitches, so I'm gonna switch over to some fresh swatches. You're gonna line up your pieces with the wrong sides together and this will be the end of your project, and these are the live beginning stitches that you just placed on your needle. So here's how you work the Kitchener stitch. You're gonna to need to put some yarn onto a darning needle, and of course it needs to be the same color as your piece. I'm gonna use a contrasting color so you can see it better. You're gonna start by inserting the tapestry needle through the first stitch on the front needle as if to purl. So like so, and you're gonna leave that stitch on the needle. So that's your little setup row. Now we're gonna get started with the rows that we, re that we repeat for the grafting. So you're gonna insert your tapestry needle into the first stitch on the back needle as if to knit, so like this. And you're gonna leave it on your needle. And you're gonna to jump to the front and insert your needle into the first stitch as if to knit. And this time you're gonna slide that off. Next, you're gonna stay on the front and you're gonna insert your little needle as if to purl and you're gonna leave that stitch on for now. And then jump to the back, insert your needle as if to purl and then you're gonna slide it off this time. So you're gonna repeat those four steps all the way around. So I like to just say you're on the back, knit, leave it on your needle, front, knit, slide it off, front, purl, leave it on your needle, and then back, purl, slide it off. So I'll show you one more time, and we do have some other videos on this if you would like to check those out as well. 
Okay, so back, knit, leave, leave it on your needle, front, knit, slide it off, front, purl, leave it, and back, purl, slide it off. And just repeat that all the way around. And look at that, when you finish going all the way around, you have such a beautiful, seamless look, and you won't be able to tell where your cowl starts and stops. So before you know it, you will be warm and comforted by this snuggly cowl that will remind you of the beauty of life. This is such a perfect snuggly piece for the colder month, and it would make an amazing gift. We really hope you love this one. Have a lovely time knitting it. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you next week with another new pattern. Bye.